Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the structure of the lung, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, the alveoli, calculating the breathing rate and finally the summary. Lungs are essential to our bodies. This is because it forms and exchange surfaces. The lungs are where the body exchanges gases. In this video, I'll be talking about the structure of the lung and how the structures are adapted for exchanging gases. So first of all, let's look at what happens in the lungs. So oxygen is taken into the body and carbon dioxide is removed back out into the air. So oxygen goes in and CO2 goes out. But where are the lungs? Well, the lungs are in the thorax. This is the upper part of the body. Now we're going to label the main structures of the thorax. These are the lungs. And this is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscle. It separates the top part of your body, the thorax, from the bottom part of your body, the abdomen. The lungs are protected by bones that make up the rib cage. The lungs are surrounded by a pleural membrane. The intercostal muscles shown here lie between the rib cage. We're going to talk about more structures of the lungs in this video. So part of your thorax is your trachea. This is also known as a windpipe. This is because the trachea is a tube that the air you breathe goes down and it goes down into the lungs. The lungs also have structures called bronchi. This is when the trachea splits into two and it forms bronchi. The single limb of bronchi is bronchus. Each of these lead to one of the lungs. So this is one bronchus. The lungs also have bronchioles. This is when the bronchi splits into tubes that get progressively smaller. And these are called bronchioles. So this is a bronchiole. At the end of these bronchioles, there are small sacs full of air. These are called alveoli. And these are what alveoli look like. And the lungs have millions of these alveoli. There's also a large capillary network that surrounds the alveoli. So this is the alveoli, or alveolus if singular, and this is a large capillary network that surrounds the alveoli. The large capillary network increases the efficiency of gas exchange. So what happens during gas exchange? Well, gases diffuse in and out of the blood. So in this diagram, this is a bronchial. And this is an alveolus. This is a capillary. And remember, capillaries are tiny blood vessels. And the blood flow in the capillary goes like this. The capillaries carry red blood cells, so air goes in and out of the alveoli. As the blood in the capillaries have just come from the body, they have a large concentration of carbon dioxide. There is a low concentration of carbon dioxide inside the alveoli. This means carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli. There is a high concentration of oxygen inside the alveolus. This means that it diffuses down the concentration gradient into the capillaries. This allows blood to transport oxygen to cells that need it for respiration. The direction these gases move is the other way around in other tissues of the body. In this diagram, the direction of blood flow is like this. And these are body cells. In this example, there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the body cells and a low concentration of carbon dioxide in the capillaries. This means that carbon dioxide moves into the capillaries from the body cells. As the blood vessel has come from the lungs, there's a high concentration of oxygen. There's a low concentration of oxygen in the body cells. This means that oxygen moves down the concentration gradient through diffusion into the body cells. The blood then goes to the lungs to replenish the amount of oxygen in the blood. We may also have to calculate the breathing rate. We might want to do this to monitor any change that occurs during exercise or while sleeping. This is because your breathing rate changes during these activities. So you can calculate the breathing rate with the following equation. So breathing rate equals the number of breaths divided by the number of minutes. Now let's look at an example. So let's calculate the breathing rate of someone who takes 120 breaths in 10 minutes. So if we divide 120 by 10, we get 12 breaths per minute. And now you're able to calculate the breathing rate. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revive smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.